the world shrinks. Horizons expand. The speed of progress leaves us breathless. With high performance computing to lift us, we see more possibilities, new opportunities. We see where the future starts. Welcome everyone. Thank you to Gary and to all of you for joining us today at CES 2021. It's an honor to keynote CES for the second time. I know for most of us, we start every January together, so doing a virtual keynote is certainly different. At CES last year, none of us could have imagined all the things that would happen in 2020 as we navigated the COVID-19 pandemic globally. I know it was a challenging year for everyone, but it was also a year where we experienced firsthand the increasingly important role technology plays in every aspect of our lives. For all of us in the tech industry, although we've had our set of challenges, 2020 was perhaps one of our most productive years. From how we work, to how our kids learned, to our entertainment, to accelerating the pace of our digital transformation, high-performance computing has never been more important in our daily lives or to our future. The world needed us to turbocharge our technology capabilities, and our industry delivered wonderfully in so many different ways. At AMD, our focus has always been to push the envelope on high-performance computing across the cloud, infrastructure, and personal computing. And in 2020, we broadened our focus to ensure we were working with our partners to drive innovation, provide more capability, and meet the new requirements of a digital-first world. I'm most proud of the work we have done with technology applied to solve some of the world's most challenging research problems. A great example of this is the work in the scientific community. Scientists and researchers really pivoted on a dime to pool their resources to rally around research on vaccines, therapeutics, and other important learnings to combat and understand the pandemic. And to help them do this, the AMD COVID-19 HPC Fund donated over 12 petaflops of supercomputing last year to many of the world's leading universities and labs conducting infectious disease research. Let's hear from some of the researchers on their work. When the pandemic came along, there was a remarkable moment. Almost overnight, it seemed, the researchers that had been working on various other applications changed their research quickly to address COVID more directly. I've never seen such a universal desire to reach out across disciplines to form these interdisciplinary collaborations to try to do what we can to understand this virus, to understand the COVID-19 disease, and to help overcome the pandemic. I'm the director of the Quran Institute of Mathematical Sciences. I'm an associate professor of molecular biosciences. We run the big computers. We do high performance computing. I am a professor in the Department of Mathematics and Statistics. There's never enough computing available. There's always a huge demand. That is where the AMD donation really comes into play. It's going to allow us to take all of this big data and make sense of it. The hardware will enable scientific breakthroughs because it has been designed specifically to be an AI-capable machine. The fact that this new platform that's being provided to us by AMD can do this quadrillion calculations per second you know, will really allow us to build more sophisticated models. High-performance computing that can process massive amounts of data and then couple it to simulations to make predictions, it could be just a game changer. We're gonna have the capability of feeding all of these parameters, the molecular parameters, cellular parameters, clinical parameters from patients into machine learning algorithms. We're now not limited anymore 
um, by how quickly those machine learning algorithms can run because of how uh, powerful these, these new GPU clusters are. Jobs that used to take weeks on a supercomputer to run can happen in a matter of hours. When you're dealing with a pandemic, time is important and getting solutions and ideas and possible you know, therapeutics and drugs as soon as you can is of paramount importance. We have many people across 55 departments, or more than 55 departments in fact, that are doing COVID-related research. The researchers made these rapid changes in their work and I think that speaks to the generality of the machine learning methods, but also to the power of the computing. And then AMD came along with this remarkable gift of tremendous additional computing power at just the right time to help us accelerate the research results that leads to real answers. The industry ability to partner with universities is a real boon to scientific development. It's a really exciting time to be doing science where the computer is really a part of the experiment. It can take us to places we never expected we'd be able to go. People feel like they're a partner, they're part of something important. They all you know, drop what they have to do and they go work on this thing. We're all in it together and that is just something really, really nice to see. Those researchers, those researchers truly are inspiring. And you know that what they're learning will not only help in this pandemic, but will actually position us much, much better for the future. Now, when the pandemic hit, our lives actually changed, practically overnight, as we went to working, schooling, and sheltering at home. In many businesses, digital transformations that typically would have taken years to complete were adopted in a matter of weeks or months. And while these shifts were challenging on a personal level, the differences were dramatic on the planet. Just take a look at some of the satellite data. This shows the level of harmful emissions in the skies over Europe. Fewer people on the roads meant significantly reduced emissions, improved air quality, and visibly less smog. At the same time, we transitioned to the new normal of working and schooling from home. We've all needed to adapt to new ways of communicating and collaborating, which has placed significantly higher demands on our digital infrastructure and made devices like the PC even more essential. So if you take a look at some of the user stats, Zoom users are now approaching three and a half trillion minutes of meetings per year. Cisco WebEx meeting participants recently hit 600 million per month. And Microsoft Teams is now supporting 115 million daily active users. All of these examples make it clear how over the last year, our relationship with technology has fundamentally changed. The pandemic has elevated technology to become an essential part of how we live, work, play, and communicate. And at the center of all this technology is high performance computing. That's why I'm very excited today to be joined by leaders from several of the industry's most important companies to share their perspective on the technology trends and products that will define 2021. Together, we'll show you how advances in high performance computing will once again reset expectations for what's possible across PCs, gaming, and the data center. So with that as an introduction, let's get started with one of our biggest partners and a company that plays a significant role across each of these markets. To talk more about our work together, please welcome Microsoft Chief Product Officer Panos Panay. Hi, Lisa. Hey, Panos, it's so good to see you. Thank you for joining me today. You bet. Boy, I think I've connected with you uh, quite a bit over the past few months on Microsoft Teams, so I feel like I see you in the screen all the time. We've definitely learned to work together this way, for sure. So look, um, you know, it's been an incredible time in the world and, you know, certainly for tech. Um, you know, Microsoft is at the center of that and really empowering people. You know, can you tell me a little bit about what it's been like for you and the team at Microsoft these last 10 months? You know, like many people at Microsoft, they're learning to work differently. And, I, you know, I feel that certainly. I mean, yesterday I was in a meeting uh, with Satya. My dogs were barking in the background. The garage door opened. And, you know, you're kind of working through it. I think like everybody, we're still adapting, still learning. It takes time. You know, how we connect uh, with each other is changing right now, Lisa, in a huge way. How we work is changing. How we learn is changing. You know, so school, work, even how we're gaming, which is so important to what we do together, uh, you know, and then ultimately we're seeing that, you know, at Microsoft, that PC, it's becoming more essential than it's ever been before, but not only as a um, productivity tool, but as a tool to connect with other humans and people in general, uh, whether it's at school or work. And you see that, you just said it, you know, as we work together, it's super powerful because we can continue to move forward, continue to push the boundaries. And I think between our companies, it's our, it's our responsibility to help tech disappear into the background and help people do that connection. Our customers need that right now more than ever. And so we can talk about how 
folks are kind of working at Microsoft, but then you can see this intensity of usage of our products together. That's really coming to life. How we support that day in and day out matters, but how we look to the future also. And to your point, you know, whether it's uh, the intensity on Teams or Windows or Azure on the back end supporting so much, or just the delight of being able to game on a PC or an Xbox right now that, you know, you, you have a whole, whole team at Microsoft, a whole company, if you will, kind of rallying around uh, how to help people stay connected, work, play, uh, and learn, and ultimately being able to partner with with uh, AMD has been phenomenal for us. Well, look, I think, um, you know, Panos, actually, I think we see it exactly the same way. It's such a special time where we can really use technology um, to help people do all the things that they need to do, and uh, and frankly, it is how we stay connected. So. You know, um, I'm so proud of uh, the work that we've done together. It's, you know, our partnership is just incredibly broad and, uh, you know, spans all the way from, you know, yeah. cloud and data center to, you know, console gaming and then, you know, to Windows and Surface. Um, it's just been, you know, so great to partner with uh, your team. So can you talk a little bit about some of the, the, um, the co-engineering and, and what uh, we're trying to accomplish? Yeah, I think it'd be great. I'd love to. I, first, let me just say AMD's momentum right now is incredible. Uh, the the impact you're having on the world, the, the work you've done. Uh, let me just say that, like, and, and truly from the most humblest place, like we've been working together, Lisa, for a long time, you and I. Uh, but before I get into any of that, I would we ju we should start right now. When you talk partnerships, we got to start with gaming, don't we? Working on the Xbox Series X and Series S. Uh, these, this work doesn't happen in a silo. This is two teams getting together, getting right down to the depth of what it means to deliver an incredible gaming experience. Uh, now we have this incredibly the most performant console on the planet, and that's the work we do together. I think some people just think it, ha you know, sometimes I hear it just happens. No, these are two teams coming together, working in detail. Then take it to the next level, the work you're doing with Azure, the detailed work with AMD and Azure coming together with Epic, delivering for Game Pass and xCloud. Like, these are real depth partnerships. And here's my favorite thing and, and the way we work together. And for those of you who don't know, like, you can take that architecture and that thinking that drives the Xbox, uh, the RDNA architecture, if you will, RDNA 2, I think, and you just move that into what is the PC. Like, and that's, that's what just now I get super excited, of course, because you know how much I love Windows, uh, how much I love working on these products. Um, uh, leading into your Radeon product, which has been so incredibly powerful for the PC right now to help gamers push forward, you know, the, to help the high performance PC compute happen. And right now, think about customers in this time, you know, we have that intensity of usage. This is even CAD at home or gaming at home, being able to push 64 core computing with Threadripper. You're doing all that with us, but it's really the detailed work of the two teams coming together to bring that to life. But let me also share with you, we created a small video for you, Lisa. I knew what we were coming on today. And I thought, boy, it'd be so fun. Yeah, I'd love to see it. Panos, that was fantastic. Thank you again for joining us. It was great to see you, and thanks for providing uh, those, uh, those insights for our audience. What a blast. Lisa, thank you for having me. I, I really am grateful, and thank you for this partnership. I think AMD is doing amazing things right now, and uh, your tech is moving this world forward, and, and we're so grateful for it. Now let's turn our attention to PCs. In 2020, approximately 300 million notebooks, desktops, and Chromebooks were sold. That's the highest number since 2014. And we expect demand to be even higher in 2021 as the PC continues playing 
an even larger role in our daily lives. At AMD, we believe the PC has never been more essential. Now, last November, we introduced our first processors powered by our new Zen 3 CPU core. Zen 3 is a new architecture that brings new capabilities to PCs while delivering leadership performance and energy efficiency. The Zen 3 core is a phenomenal example of AMD's dedication to building the best technology. We redesigned the core to deliver our largest generation over generation performance increase since we launched the Zen family. Zen 3 increases our lead in overall performance and energy efficiency and also delivers the best single threaded performance. As a result, the Ryzen 5000 series CPUs are the fastest processors in the world for gamers and creators. Now we designed Zen 3 to scale from ultra thin notebooks all the way up to supercomputers. And I'm excited to announce we're starting 2021 by launching the most powerful PC processors ever built for ultra thin and gaming notebooks. Today, I'm proud to introduce the AMD Ryzen 5000 series mobile processors powered by our new Zen 3 core. These new chips offer both tremendous performance and long battery life. In fact, AMD is the only company with an 8-core x86 processor for ultra-thins. For many years, the notebook PC market was on an incremental pace. By combining our leadership design capabilities with 7 nanometer process technology, our 4000 series mobile processors launched last year set a new performance trajectory for notebook processors. And we continue that new performance trajectory in 2021 with our Ryzen 5000 series mobile processors. You can expect to do more, to be more productive, and to have more immersive gaming experiences with a notebook powered by our new Ryzen mobile processors. Now, with so many of us working and learning from home in 2020, the performance and capabilities of our home PC actually defined how we worked and how we learned and much of our social interaction. We saw our productivity, our ability to create, and our opportunities to connect limited by the computing power of our PC. And for many of us, we wanted more. Our new AMD Ryzen 5000 series mobile processors for ultra-thin notebooks will be a significant step forward in performance and efficiency. With up to eight of our new Zen 3 cores, the AMD Ryzen 5000 series are the best processors in the world for thin and light notebooks. Whether you're running general office productivity applications or more CPU intensive tasks like video rendering, photo editing, or 3D design, the Ryzen 5000 series actually sets the new bar for leadership performance. Now, the AMD Ryzen 7 5800U is our best ultra thin notebook processor. It has eight cores, 16 threads with a boost up to 4.4 gigahertz, and all of this while operating within a 15 watt thermal design that's required for these ultra thin notebooks. Now, when you take a look at the benchmarks across a large range of applications, it's just very clear that the Ryzen 7 5800U just runs your software faster. It's a very special product, the fastest x86 processor in the world for thin and light notebooks. Now, the performance is really great, but in the notebook form factor, battery life is also extremely important. And this is where the energy efficiency of the Zen 3 core truly shines. We've just done a ton of optimization in this space. And with the Ryzen 5000 series, you can expect up to 17 and a half hours of general use and 21 hours of video playback on a single charge. Now that's a major jump compared to our previous generation and true all day battery life. Now notebook customers don't just buy thin and light laptops, but millions of people actually buy notebooks to play PC games. AMD has a rich history in PC gaming and deep ties to the gaming community. Gamers actually want desktop-like performance in the notebook form factor, and that's exactly what we built. Our new HX series mobile processors raise the bar for gaming notebooks. The HX brand actually represents our commitment to build the best processors for gaming. They feature the same Zen 3 cores from our best-in-class Ryzen 5000 desktop processors that deliver leadership frame rates. They're also unlocked for overclocking and have higher thermal ratings for sustained performance, which is key for gaming. Now let me introduce you to our top-of-the-line Ryzen 9 HX processors. The 5900HX boosts up to 4.6 GHz, while the 5980HX boosts up to 4.8 GHz, both with eight cores and thermal design power of 45 watts or higher. So now let's take a look at the Ryzen 5900HX in action. What you're looking at here is a very graphics intensive game, Horizon Zero Dawn, running on our new Ryzen 5900HX processor. We're running this game at 1080p with a high detail preset to really stress the CPU. And as you can see, our new mobile HX processors are delivering smooth frame rates of over 100 frames per second. 
And for all of you looking for a mobile 4K experience, I'm happy to report that gaming notebooks featuring our new HX processors are also capable of delivering smooth gaming experiences when running at 4K at high settings. Now turning to some benchmarks versus a competition, whether you're talking about single-threaded performance or overall CPU performance, the HX series wins by a wide margin. This is why the best gaming notebooks of 2021 will be powered by AMD Ryzen mobile HX processors. To bring the Ryzen 5000 mobile processors to market, we're really pleased with the strong partnership with the industry's leading PC OEMs. This year, we expect the number of notebook designs powered by our new generation of Ryzen mobile processors to grow by 50% compared to the Ryzen 4000 series. We expect more than 150 ultra-thin gaming and professional notebooks powered by Ryzen 5000 series to launch this year. This means even more choice for consumers. And you won't have to wait long to get your hands on these new systems with the first notebooks expected to be on sale from the world's top notebook providers in February. We couldn't be more excited about what the Ryzen 5000 will do for you in 2021. To drive innovation in the PC market, you need great partners. Our next guest leads one of the world's largest PC companies. Let's welcome HP CEO and a great friend, Enrique Lores. Hi, Enrique. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's great to see you to start the new year together. Lisa, it's great to see you as well, and congratulations for keynoting this year in AMD, and also for all the success of AMD. Well, look, we are uh, so honored to be partnered with HP. HP has uh, really been at the center of Silicon Valley innovation. And um, during the past year, you know, you and I have talked a lot about, you know, really the charge that you're leading in helping consumers and businesses use technology to transform the way uh, we live, work, and learn. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the trends that you've seen accelerating over the past year? Sure. I think the, one of the most important things we have seen during the last months is that PCs have become essential. With people working from home, kids learning from home, playing from home, families entertaining from home, the PC have become really the center of all these processes. And this is driving a new source of innovation, enabling people to do things from their homes, connecting to their offices, really becoming much more efficient. And this is what we all have been working together. And I think we also have learned that it's not only about developing technology, it's about developing technology that everybody can access, because I think we have an obligation as well to make sure that technology doesn't help to divide our current societies. So this is something that we are working together on that I think is very important as well. Now, I, I think you're absolutely right, Enrique. It's, it's such an opportunity for us to um, offer technology uh, to, uh, to help people in all walks of life. So, um, look, you know, I think the AMD HP partnership has, um, you know, spanned um, a really broad reach uh, from uh, commercial PCs uh, to ultra thin um, consumer notebooks to gaming and creator PCs. So uh, we just showed everyone the new AMD Ryzen 5000 mobile processors, and we truly appreciate uh, the deep partnership with HP. Can you tell us about some of the designs that uh, you're planning this year? Yes, and, and before that, it's probably useful to recap a bit. I still remember the first meeting you and I had when none of us were the CEOs of our companies, where we were thinking and designing the first commercial PCs with AMD. And we have really lo gone a long way since this very early conversation six, seven years ago. And I think with the launches this year, we have really shown how much progress we have made and whether we look at the versatility of the new designs, the security that we have built into the solutions and the new form factors and the premium, the premium designs that we are bringing, clearly we are making a difference and we are showing what the combination of both companies can bring to the market. No, you're so right, Enrique. What I really appreciate is that every year um, the technology gets better, the partnership gets better, and I think our, um, you know, what we can offer um, our customers gets better. So, uh, look, it's an incredible time for innovation um, in the PC market and across tech more broadly. Enrique, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I'm you know, really, really thankful for our partnership and look forward to all the great new devices that we'll have out in uh, 2021. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Now let's turn our attention to gaming. Gaming has continued to grow in recent years, and 2020 was another record year. Four in five U.S. consumers have played a video game in the past six months. 
And at $174 billion in annual revenue, the gaming industry is actually larger than the movie and music industries combined. We're now approaching 3 billion people playing games. That's 40% of the world's population. Now, gaming is at the heart of so much of what we do at AMD. Gamers push us to innovate faster because they always want more. More frames, more pixels, and more immersive experiences which is exactly what we delivered with our new CPUs and GPUs and the new generation of game consoles powered by AMD. The hottest products in the world today are the new game consoles from Microsoft and Sony. Panos mentioned our work with Microsoft to build high-performance CPUs and GPUs for the Xbox Series X and Series S. We're also incredibly proud of our deep partnership with Sony to power the new PlayStation 5. All these next-generation consoles use custom AMD SoCs with Ryzen and Radeon technology. Console gaming has never looked better, and AMD is providing the underlying technology pushing 4K gaming across these platforms. Now, for PC gamers, we introduced high-end graphics cards to the desktop PC market at the end of 2020 with the Radeon RX 6000 series. With the Radeon 6900 XT, 6800 XT, and 6800, we have leadership at the high end. The reviews and awards for these products have been fantastic, and we know that millions of gamers are excited about the RX 6000 series. Whether you're building your own gaming rig or buying a new gaming PC, we truly have the best for PC gamers. We're working with our partners to drive a record number of premium desktop gaming systems from OEMs and from system builders, featuring our new Radeon RX 6000 series graphics cards and our Ryzen 5000 series desktop CPUs. Now, the underlying graphics architecture for all these new PC and console products is AMD RDNA 2. With RDNA 2, we really exceeded our goals. We doubled the performance from the first generation of RDNA in 2019, and we achieved a 65% performance per watt increase while supporting the full DX12 Ultimate experience for gamers. The team did a great job with this architecture, and you'll see many more products in 2021 with RDNA 2. We talked about the importance of gaming notebooks a bit earlier, and we'll be bringing RDNA 2 to gaming notebooks next. So let me show you a preview of the RDNA 2 graphics architecture in a notebook reference design. What you're looking at here is Dirt 5, another demanding game running at ultra-high settings in 1440p. And what you see is more than 60 frames per second. Just beautiful, smooth gameplay. We're on track to launch the first notebooks with RDNA 2 in the first half of the year with our partners. And you'll also see new mainstream RDNA 2 desktop graphic card designs in the first half of the year as well. We're very excited to have RDNA 2 across the entire spectrum from consoles to desktops to notebooks soon. Now, while console and PC gaming are the most fun for some people, for others, it's gorgeous content and Hollywood films. Today, high-performance computing makes it faster and less expensive to produce amazing movies and TV shows. My next guest has overseen some of the most beloved stories and characters ever, with visual effects and computer animation powered by AMD. Francois Chardavon is the head of technology for Lucasfilm and Industrial Light and Magic. Hi, really happy to be here, Lisa. Great to see you. Thanks for joining us. So um, ILM, Lucasfilm, and AMD have worked together now for more than a decade, yet 2020 is probably one of the most memorable um, of the years that we've worked together. Uh, the demand for content is through the roof. Can you tell us a little bit about how 2020 has changed the way you work? Absolutely, you're right. Uh, Lucasfilm just recently announced um, 10 new series and uh, feature films, and a lot of studios are doing the same thing. To content creation is through the roof across all of the, the major content creators. And for ILM in particular, despite all the disruption for 2020, it's been an incredibly busy year. And we're looking out to 2021 and it's gonna be even bigger. We built an entirely new studio from scratch in um, Sydney, Australia to add to our four other studios. We opened a few months before the pandemic really hit and it was an opportunity for rethinking from the ground up all of our infrastructure to make sure that we're making the best choices possible. One of the most important parts of our infrastructure for what we do is the render farm, really the compute firepower that creates all of the images that you see on screen. And for Sydney, we decided to go exclusively with, with AMD to build our facility up. And uh, that was something that uh, really empowered that studio to hit the ground running despite all the disruption of, of 2020. Wow, Francois, that's just fascinating. I mean, just to think of all of the things that you guys have to think about when you're, you know, producing, you know, the best content in the world. So, you know, you guys were really an early adopter of AMD Epic and um, Threadripper. Can you tell us a little bit about how the tech works for you? 
Absolutely. I mean, I think for us, it's really about scale and flexibility. Scale just to produce the sheer amount of content across all of our studios where we just need as much firepower as possible. And AMD is really focused on building out the amount of power that you can put in any individual's hands, the amount of threads and cores that you have available is unprecedented. And this really helps us deliver the, the content that we have. That scale comes into play a whole lot more than it ever has, even for interactive processes, not just the overnight processes, where more and more we're just seeing software take advantage of uh, that sheer amount of threads that are, that are available with AMD processors um, in a way the software never has before. And so artists are able to make changes and immediately see the results. That gives you more of an intuitive sense of how when you turn the knob, it really affects what you see on screen uh, that really changes how you approach the creative process. <laughs> you know, Francois, you sound like you love cores and threads just as much as I do. So uh, we, uh, <laughs> we love that. But, you know, it, you know you're really um, you know, pushing the envelope on um, you know, what technology can do. And it sounds like there are actually things that you can do in your creative pipeline or workflow that you weren't able to do before. Can you tell us a little bit about that? As artists more and more are having to tackle really high resolution content, high dynamic range, uh, more bit depth, it's just a lot of data to process. And a lot of the, the codecs, the, the compression algorithms for the content, are becoming more and more elaborate than they have before. And being able to play back at speed 4K content, 8K content, we have rides that are projected on huge screens that are sometimes multiple 16K content. We've never been able to review that before. And that's an area where we're really looking to AMD to, to help us solve that problem in, in a cost-effective way that, that used to be really limited to specialized hardware. And uh, AMD is making that a whole lot more commoditized than it, than it ever has in the past. That's fantastic. Really, uh, really exciting stuff. I know we're all looking forward to seeing it. Well, um, you know, thank you so much uh, for joining us today and giving us you know, some of your insights on how you know, high performance computing um, really does enable all of the wonderful work um, that, uh, that you do at ILM and Lucasfilm. We're really proud to be your partner and really look forward to doing much, much more together in the future. Thank you so much, Lisa. This has been great and AMD has been an amazing partner through all this. Let's take a look at some of the great work by Lucasfilm and ILM using high performance computing. To share more about our work in the PC, workstation, and server markets, let's welcome our great friend, Lenovo Chairman and CEO, Yang Yuanqing. YY, it's great to see you today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you for having me here. You know, I've heard you say Lenovo is focused on building smarter technology for all, data center, PCs, mobile phones, and smart devices. Can you tell me a little bit about what the Lenovo team experienced in 2020 when it comes to the world's transition to digital first? Why some people predicted a smartphone would replace PC and the tablets before. The work and the study from home trend have proven PC to be an essential productivity tool now. Although this trend was studied by the pandemic, it has now become a new lifestyle. So even after the pandemic, we believe this new lifestyle will stay. And the Lenovo is committed to meet our customers' requirements. You know, we enjoy such a great partnership that spans from data center to workstation to all forms of PC. Lenovo has some of the best solutions with AMD products, whether it's um, our Ryzen 5000 or our Threadripper workstation products or our um, AMD Epic product line. Um, how do you view our expanding partnership and you know, what we're able to bring to customers in these markets? We are happy to address different customer needs with a broader portfolio of technologies and the solutions we create with AMD. Our Legion gaming system are well recognized by eSports enthusiasts. Our yoga products are the perfect blend of style and performance. Our ThinkPad and the ThinkBook allows the professionals 
take their productivity home or anywhere. And our workstations continue to generate creative contents and uh, inspire the world. That's just really fantastic, YY. You know, we're starting a new year together during our digital CES, and I know you often use CES to kick off your most important announcements for the year. So can you tell us about some of the things that you're excited about for 2021? As a part of our Smarter Technology for All vision, we believe there should also be connectivity for all. We have embedded 5G technology across a number of our products to make sure they can be always on and always connected. But 2020 told us that what our customers need in the new normal is a breakthrough in a few existing technologies that have become absolutely essential today. We are leveraging advanced technology like uh, artificial intelligence and the latest uh, hardware innovations to drive breakthrough in this space. As a customer-centric company, Lenovo is definitely focused on innovations that makes the biggest impact on customers' lives today and in the future. That sounds super exciting, YY. Thank you again for joining us today. I'm really looking forward to all the great new AMD-powered products Lenovo has in the works. We've talked about the impact of high-performance computing in our research, in our work, in education, gaming, and the movies. But high-performance computing is also changing the world of professional sports. AMD is very proud to be an official partner to the seven-time champion Mercedes-AMG Formula One racing team. Now let's talk to our superstar driver, Lewis Hamilton, and team CEO, Total Wolf, to find out how the world of high-performance computing and auto racing and esports are coming together. Lewis, how are you? It's so great to see you after such a busy year. I'm well, thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Well, look, first, congratulations on your record-tying seventh Formula One Drivers' Championship. Just simply amazing. Thank Toto, thanks for joining us and congratulations to you as well for winning your seventh Constructors Championship as a team. Thank you for having me. I'm pleased to join you. And yeah, it was a, another good season. We won a seventh Constructor Championship. It was a difficult year with COVID-19, but finally on track, uh, we were successful. Well, it's fantastic. I know it was um, such a, a grueling year, but you guys were just amazing. And uh, hey, one of the things um, I know about you is that you love gaming, and uh, AMD loves gaming too. Uh, in fact, I heard you might be having some fun in your downtime with your new AMD-powered Sony PlayStation 5. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, I've, I've actually always been, uh, you know, my, my dad was actually, um, uh, he was always into computers, and when, he, when, uh, when I was younger, when we started racing, he, he worked on computers for the British Rail, and then he uh, got into his own uh, IT and network support company. So I remember being at home growing up and my dad taking apart these, uh, the PCs, and I remember getting involved and learning how to, to build um, computers for him when I was, started working with him when I was 17. I was always, always into gaming, and um, watching the technology advance over the years has been absolutely mind-blowing. And um, yes, of course, I couldn't, I've been nagging everyone for the PS5, uh, like everyone is, and I finally got it, and I actually carry it around with me. Um, I, I travel with it everywhere I go, and I have a, mo a real a gaming monitor, the whole headphone, I'm, I'm fully geared up. I'm just imagining that, imagining you getting into the zone with your uh, PS5, so that's wonderful. Um, look, you know, one of the reasons AMD is um, an official partner to your team is that Formula One is such a great application of high-performance computing technology. Can you just tell me a little bit about your view of the role of technology in, um, in racing and how the team depends on partners like um, our computing technology? Well, it's incredible when people look at the, the image next to you of the Formula One car, you know, everything is built in-house. Pretty much everything is built in-house. Uh, give or take the tires and, and maybe brakes, but majority of the stuff is designed in-house and built in-house and designed on CAD uh, machines. We, uh, you know, the technology in terms of um, that the software they use for um, error data analysis. Um, you, we have a, a real wind tunnel and then we have a virtual wind tunnel. Um, and the crazy amount of computing power that takes place for that is, is insane to see and it's advancing all the time. 
and um, from weekend, uh, each weekend there's a, cr a huge amount of download. I think it's over 500 gigabytes of downloaded uh, data, which gets transferred back to the fa uh, back to the uh, UK to headquarters, is digested. Um, we're running a, a huge amount of simulations through the weekends um, in terms of getting the, the right setup strategy. Um, from a driver, driver's point of view, the, to get ahead, you need to understand um, the data. That's understanding the, the, uh, all the controls. I have over 20 buttons on my steering wheel that uh, have a direct link to how the, the car behaves. So I'm studying that in the background on computers uh, all the time. And also when we come back into the garage, the car downloads and the data pops up on my screen and I'm having to, down, uh, uh, I'm in, having to push that technology to be faster. The faster we can get that, the faster I can analyze it and the faster I can get back out there and, uh, and, and improve. So it's, it's a huge part and, and huge asset for us. And, um, I'm super grateful that we, we have AMD with us. Oh, it'll be uh, fantastic to watch. We're looking forward to it. So our work with you and the team goes much deeper than seeing the AMD brand on the uh, beautiful W11 car. You know, from the computing needed to design the setup and set up the cars to the notebooks and desktops that the team uses um, on track and everywhere in between. Can you talk a little bit about how you're using um, our technology as a team? Yes, so it goes much beyond the sticker on the car, like we call it. The marketing and branding benefit is just the icing on the cake. What is really beneficial in our relationship is there's only a few of these partnerships that we have is the technical collaboration and the advantage that you provide to us. And it's not only hardware like the desktops or the notebooks, it's really ingrained or it's making its way into our performance departments, be it in the vehicle dynamic uh, group or in aerodynamics into the simulation. Um, we are starting to really integrate AMD products and that should give us an advantage um, against our direct competitors. Well, we love to be part of that advantage. And now, Toto, you're responsible for not just the Formula One team, but the Formula E team, as well as the eSports team. And I know many of our viewers here are uh, very interested in eSports. So can you talk a little bit about how you're using technology there? We have been growing our um, department around eSports from something that was a little bit uh, trial and error a few years ago to a real professional team. And we see um, the audiences growing massively and it, it has become an area of performance, like with the real car. So it's all about simulation, it's about development and the setup of the car. And there again, um, without wanting to disclose our competitive advantage, you have been part um, of our success and we, we count on you. That's uh, super, super cool. Um, Lewis and Toto, thank you so much. It's been such an honor to have you join us today and thank best you. of luck in the new season. I'm really looking forward to our partnership continuing and uh, seeing what happens as uh, we go through the year. Yes, uh, we are really happy and proud to have you on board and uh, you help us um, with the competitive uh, edge. And uh, yes, thank you very much for having me. Now let's turn our attention to one of the most important areas of high performance computing, the data center, cloud, and supercomputing. During our 2019 CES keynote, we demonstrated the world's first 64 core x86 server processor. Since then, AMD Epic processors have been adopted by the largest cloud service providers, the fastest supercomputers, and in the heart of the enterprise. In addition to the researchers we heard from earlier using AMD technologies for medical research, our EPIC processors are also being used for research in areas like weather forecasting, climate change, and energy exploration. From AWS to Google to Microsoft, Tencent, Cloud, and Oracle, the largest cloud providers have adopted EPIC processors to power their internal infrastructure and services. And that incredible growth in video collaboration I highlighted earlier, those too are powered by AMD EPIC, including services like Microsoft Teams running on Azure. And while each of these customers has unique needs and requirements, they all share one thing in common. They will take as much computing power as they can get, and they all want more. That's why we're so excited about our upcoming third-gen Epic processors. Third-gen Epic will reset the bar for data center computing. With up to 64 leadership Zen 3 cores, our next generation server processors extend our leadership in performance, total cost of ownership, and security. 
But today, we wanted to give you the world's first preview of the upcoming processor's codename Milan, running WRF, one of the most popular tools used for climate research and weather forecasting. WRF is used in 185 countries, and as you might expect, to simulate something as complex as a weather system, WRF is an extremely demanding application that benefits from more processing power. Let's take a look at the competitive performance of our upcoming Milan processors running a simulation. In this test, we're comparing two comparably configured servers running a compute-intensive weather forecast for the continental United States. The system on the right features two of our next-generation 32-core Milan processors, and the system on the left features two of the highest-end dual-socket processors from our competition. We're taking in a large set of climate data to produce a six-hour weather forecast, and what you see is that the additional performance of the AMD EPIC processors completes the simulation much, much faster. The third-gen EPIC server completed the forecast 68% faster than the competition. And the speed to complete in this case is very important because if the simulation runs faster, it means scientists improve the accuracy of the forecast by using a larger data set for the model or running more simulations per day. Now, just imagine how much more performance you're going to see with two 64-core Milan processors. We're extremely excited about bringing third-gen EPIC to market and can't wait to show you more when we launch later this quarter. Now, it's been so much fun today, but it's time to wrap this up. I'm so thankful for our amazing partners who joined us today. Panos Panay from Microsoft, Enrique Lores from HP, Francois Chardevoin from Lucasfilm ILM, YY from Lenovo, and Lewis Hamilton and Toto Wolf from Mercedes AMG Formula One. Today, we've seen the power of high performance computing from scientific research to education to global business to auto racing to gaming and filmmaking. I hope you're leaving with the same excitement that I have. I'm really proud to be part of this amazing industry. And when we work together across disciplines, the technology that we build can make a huge impact on people's lives. AMD and our partners will continue to push the envelope on high performance computing in 2021 and the years ahead. Thank you for joining me today and have a fantastic digital CES experience.